In this video, we are going to continue our journey of looking at reactions of aldehydes and ketones by looking at reduction reactions. Much of what we're going to see in this video is a review of some of the reactions that we have seen previously this semester or even back in Organic Chemistry 1, but since it's been a while in some of these cases, we're going to do a quick tour of reduction reactions of aldehydes and ketones. Where Remember that when we are doing reduction reactions, of aldehydes or ketones, we're reducing the number of bonds between carbon and an electronegative atom. In this case, we're reducing the number of bonds between carbon and oxygen. So we will not have that carbonyl group present, but instead we'll be reducing the aldehyde or ketone group to either an alcohol, or in some cases, such as the Clemenson and wolf kishner reactions, reducing all the way to an alkane by getting rid of the oxygen in total. So let's talk first about reducing an aldehyde or ketone to an alcohol. Then we'll get into reduction reactions that reduce an aldehyde or ketone all the way to an alkane. So let's go ahead and do this reduction of aldehyde or ketone to an alcohol. So in these reactions, what we're gonna do is we will start with either an aldehyde or ketone. The reagents that we can use to carry this out are largely the same. So I'm gonna put R and R prime in here and I'm gonna call those R and R prime. Can be either a hydrogen or an alkyl group so that these molecules meet the definition of aldehyde or ketone. What we're going to do is using reducing agents, we will have three main options for converting an aldehyde or ketone into an alcohol product. And in all three of these cases, the alcohol product we generate will be the same. It will always correspond to replacing that carbonyl group with a hydroxy group and we accomplish that by bringing in a hydrogen atom here on our carbonyl carbon. So we can in many ways think of this as being another example of a nucleophilic acyl addition reaction where we would have a hydrogen nucleophile, a hydride, in the case of some of these reduction reactions coming in and forming a covalent bond here to this carbonyl carbon, forcing the pi electrons up onto the oxygen, ultimately giving rise to the hydroxy group there that we see in our final product. So this hydrogen atom is brought in as a nucleophile. And so how do we go about doing that? The reagents that we can use for that are most commonly sodium borohydride, NaBH4, generally with uh, alcohol solvent, the solvent needs to be a protic solvent, a solvent that can donate a proton. So it's generally a weakly acidic solvent, a solvent that has a proton available to donate. So water or alcohol. Alcohol is generally the, the solvent of choice here because the aldehydes and ketones have better solubility in that than they do in water. So sodium borohydride, what we can think of it acting as is it's going to act as a hydride donor where we think of the hydride as being a hydrogen that has property of the electrons that um, go with it. So in that boron hydrogen bond, the electrons from that boron hydrogen bond, we can think of kind of as being property of the hydrogen. So the hydride can come in, form a covalent bond to our carbonyl carbon there, and ultimately enable us to create the final product. Similarly, we can also use lithium aluminum hydride, LiAlH4, which is similarly a hydride donor, except that hydride donor is much more reactive generally than sodium borohydride. And so as a result, it has to be used in an aprotic solvent because it is so reactive that it will react in an acid-base reaction if you have a solvent that has a source of protons. And so generally the solvent that's used here is THF or some other ether because those are aprotic solvents. They do not have protons that are readily removed because they have no protons directly bonded to heteroatoms such as oxygens or nitrogens. After that reaction has totally taken place, you would have created a new hydride carbon bond. 
And you would be left with up here, rather than an alcohol group, you'd be left with an O minus because there is no source of proton to bring in that proton. And so therefore, after the reaction has taken place, acid has to be brought in so that this protonation of the oxygen anion intermediate can occur. And then the third method for reducing an aldehyde or ketone to an alcohol going through this review of reduction reactions is using hydrogen gas and a metal. And that will result in the addition of one of the two hydrogens up here to the oxygen, the other down here to our carbon atom, ultimately giving us an alcohol product. So all three of these we would consider as, reduce, as reducing agents that will allow us to reduce the carbonyl group of our aldehyde or ketone to an alcohol in our final product. So these are really useful reagents for reducing aldehydes or ketones. A couple of additional things to be aware of with these is that the hydride reagents won't reduce carbon-carbon double bonds. So you could have a molecule that has an alkene group in it and add sodium borohydride, lithium aluminum hydride, there's going to be no reaction with that carbon-carbon double bond. On the other hand, our H2 and metal does reduce carbon-carbon double bonds to carbon-carbon single bonds to result in so-called hydrogenation reactions where we're adding hydrogen across the carbon-carbon double bond to give the transformation of alkenes to alkanes. So if you have a molecule and you do, want, do not want the alkene group to react, then you should avoid using H2 and metal. You should go for one of the other reagents instead here. Now that we've looked at how we can convert an aldehyde or ketone to an alcohol, let's talk about another type of reduction reaction where instead of converting the aldehyde or ketone to an alcohol, we want to convert the aldehyde or ketone to an alkane. So in other words, we want to get rid of the oxygen entirely. How do we go about doing that? Well, back in our chapter on aromatic reactions, we talked about the Clemenson reduction and the wolf kishner reduction as ways that we could take acyl benzenes, that was molecules that had a carbonyl group directly bonded to the aromatic ring, and we could reduce those all the way to alkyl benzenes by using Clemenson or wolf kishner reduction reactions. Well, as it turns out, the Clemenson reaction and wolf kishner reactions are versatile in that they will also work with other aldehydes and ketones as well. And so let's take a look at those two reactions, applying them toward aldehydes and ketones beyond aromatic molecules. So Clemenson reduction. We can now expand this to start with any aldehyde or ketone. So I'm just going to plug in any aldehyde or ketone here. And our reagents for the Clemenson reduction are the same as we were looking at before, which is zinc treated with mercury. So show that like so. And then HCl. So we do have to be mindful that when we're working with something that has just an aldehyde or ketone group in it, this HCl is going to be just fine to be in the reaction mixture. It's going to do its intended purposes acting in the Clemenson reduction. But if we had another functional group in the molecule, such as an alkene group that could react with HCl via an addition reaction, we wouldn't be able to use Clemenson. So the Clemenson requires, much like before when we looked at it, that you be mindful that you not have any functional groups that can react with acid in there in an undesired in an undesired way. So the reduction reaction that occurs here um, follows a rather complex mechanism that actually occurs interestingly on the surface of the zinc is the way that this is thought to occur. And what's going to happen in the final scenario is that the carbonyl group, boom, that I've highlighted in red is going to be completely removed and replaced with hydrogen atoms. And so as a consequence of the Clemenson reduction, you just get rid of that carbonyl group. And so to predict the product of these reactions, if you see a mixture of these reagents that I'm highlighting here, that is our clue that we're doing Clemenson reduction, get rid of the carbonyl group. It's just going to be a CH2 group there in its place. Similarly, we could use the Wolf-Kishner reduction instead. 
The Wolf-Kishner reduction can have an advantage in some scenarios in that it does not require the presence of the hydrochloric acid. And so if you are working with a molecule as multiple functional groups and one of those functional groups is susceptible to reacting with acid in an undesirable way, you could instead use the Wolf-Kishner reduction, which uses hydrazine, which is H2NNH2, as well as in this reaction mixture, in addition to the hydrazine, you will have base, which could be KOH as the common base that is used here. And the outcome of this Wolf-Kishner reaction is that in the Wolf-Kishner reaction, we will be reducing our molecule down to the alkane. So get rid of that carbonyl group, replace it with just a CH2 group there in our Wolf-Kishner reaction. So we're again taking that carbonyl group, it becomes just part of an alkyl group there in the Clemenson reaction. And with the Wolf-Kishner reaction, you do have to be mindful that you have base present here. And so if you are working with something that is prone, say, to elimination reactions when base is present, then that can be a problem. And you might instead need to use the Clemenson reaction, which occurs under acidic conditions. So these give us very complementary routes to go about converting an aldehyde or ketone into an alkane molecule. And we previously talked about these in the context of reacting carbonyl groups of aldehydes and ketones that are directly attached to an aromatic ring, but these reactions are much broader than that in actuality, and they can occur at a variety of aldehyde or ketone molecules to convert them into alkanes as another tool in our kit for determining how to synthesize organic molecules. We work through puzzles and go from starting materials to try to make specific targeted organic products using all the different types of reactions that we've learned in this chapter and in other chapters as well.